Uh, we have a, a long, long history of military service uh, uh, in my uh, family extended. Uh, a lot of my, uh, my relatives, cousins, uncles had participated in the Second World War. And the rest of the story is the Naval Academy uh, went there in 1955, graduated with the class of 1959. Quite, quite an opportunity and a great learning experience and uh, quite frankly changed my life. Uh, I wound up going into the uh, out of submarine warfare community, uh, the Soviet Navy was building up rapidly a submarine force capability, nuclear powered submarines, and of course the ballistic missile program. So I was involved with tracking and pursuing Soviet submarines. We did sense a uh, overarching uh, a drama on the national stage. We uh, had uh, uh, direction to uh, proceed uh, down toward the uh, Cuban area. It was something that kind of emerged as you went along. The instructions we had uh, we're to go into a mode of uh, surface search for uh, different kinds of merchant vessels. Of course, we found out not too long after that that they were carrying <laughs> Russian missiles on these merchant vessels. Our knowledge of what was going on when we were down there, I'm talking about the junior officers, the junior people, not, not the captains and the admirals and so forth, the rank and file of us. We had only the vaguest notion of what was happening. And the uh, command and control of communications that we have today through satellites, through digital devices. We didn't have it in those days. When you go through that experience and then several years later you're, you're reading about what happened or you're seeing a movie about the 13 days in October and so forth and you see all this play out. When you were there you had no idea this was going on. From 1969 through 70, uh, 71, I was assigned to the Naval Materiel Command and uh, I worked for a four-star admiral, three-star admiral as an aid administrative assistant and uh, tracking a lot of information, making sure that the munitions, the logistics part of what uh, uh, was maintained, the right kinds of weapons, the right <clears throat> amounts and just, uh, deployed in the right places, a significant effort to make sure that that was done. And uh, my working hours were seven to seven, uh, five days a week and on call, uh, usually four or five hours on Saturday and sometimes on Sunday. Some wonderful naval officers. Uh, the, the leadership at that time were the people that had come out of the uh, uh, Second World War. And I was uh, honored to be of service and be able to work for such uh, wonderful leaders. CACI is in the national uh, uh, security field, if you will, security uh, applications and support. But it was a, a discipline that I had learned at the uh, Naval Postgraduate School in my getting my master's degree in operations research in modeling and simulation. So it was a nice fit. It turns out uh, my career evolved uh, from there, but uh, I was at the employee number 35, and there's uh, over 16,000 with CACI these days. I had a uh, instinct that the information technology world was going to be a world that exploded. And for the government to be able to take advantage of the capabilities and technologies, uh, they were going to go to the marketplace to do it. But uh, I think uh, getting that part of my vision was the key to uh, the uh, platform for building uh, CCI as we've gone across these years. Our application areas uh, are primarily in the Department of Defense area. We're matching uh, high-tech uh, development with needs and requirements and putting uh, a CCI's knowledge of how to put this together for the government. So that's our value add. Uh, there's always something that uh, we've got to be aware of, and we have people that uh, focus on these areas and track them uh, non-stop, 24-7, literally. A secret report that was leaked to the public, and um, it happened to mention uh, one of our employees having participated in some minor way, actually, to some of the issues at Abu Ghraib. And the company was looked at, uh, there were nine different kinds of investigations within the United States government, the military, and so on. And not a one of those would, was found us uh, guilty to the extent of, or too culpable in any way. And we were never charged with any, anything by the government. If the United States government believes that you as an organization or as an individual have done something culpable that they can charge and prove and so forth, they're going to do it. I, uh, I learned a lot from that experience. We did prepare a book, Our Good Name. I'm, I'm very glad we did it, frankly. Our reputation today is wonderful and we're seen as a top trusted partner our engagements with the United States government. And a lot of it had to do with the, how we handle ourselves during that particular time. We believe that uh, we had a culture of uh, capable people and uh, beliefs in doing the right thing. And, and uh, we, we actually didn't believe that probably that there was likelihood that anybody would have done anything because we screened people, interviewed them, so forth. 
but the lessons I learned uh, on, at Abu Ghraib coming out of my, my history of working in the, in the culture of character and integrity and ethics, uh, I felt like that uh, there was something that could be said about it. I started that book about four and a half years ago, close to five years now. You can observe the continuing to erode the notions of character and integrity. We need to do something about it. We've got to turn the corner. Everything was, was by your word and, and what your honor was. And, uh, we need to get back to that basic idea in our government, in our, in our industry, and in our commerce, our banking. It's not just a government issue. It's not just a commerce issue or a banking issue. It's in our society, in our culture. The, the thing that holds us, the, our civilization together is trust. I mean, if you pull out uh, your wallet, you've got a bunch of paper in it. It's got the symbols of the government printed on it. You trust it has value. When you begin to uh, I find that we don't trust each other and it begins to erode, then you're going to have troubles. Character is, is the big, big issue that we've got to keep promoting and the holdout is the way we uh, conduct ourselves. So that's what the, the book's all about. Very humbled by the opportunity and the uh, uh, fact that I've been able to serve and blessed to have been uh, born in this free world. There's nothing like the freedom we have here.